Hi everyone, Becca here. After being completely sick the last week with whatever horrible virus is running rampant through my office right now, I finally have my voice back. Um, so I thought I would do a couple of quick, shorter Zoom Note tutorials. I've seen a lot of different questions about uh, different tools, so I thought maybe I would just try to work through them and do short little tutorials for each tool on the bar. Um, maybe talk about you know, some of the options and how you can use them. I don't know. We'll just kind of wing it here. Um, so there's probably going to be some overlaps through these videos because a lot of these tools are really integrated with each other. Um, but for each one, I'll try to focus on on one toolbar button and all the things that it can do. Uh, so I figured I'd start off with the layers tool. Um, it's not really a tool, I guess, but it's a button on the toolbar. Um, so the layers option in the planner, which is one of my favorite features. Um, I'm probably going to say that a lot. I probably have three favorite features, but I, I've really been appreciating the layers if you make a lot of your own spreads or backgrounds in um, good notes you've probably gotten frustrated at one point or another uh, whenever you want to pick up an object and move it around and you end up moving everything on the page around and uh, it, it becomes really cumbersome and it takes some extra steps and mindfulness to not mess up your layers if you're or your layouts if you're bringing over a lot of images and stickers and, and putting them on your page uh, so the layers in zoom notes has been kind of a lifesaver in setting up the planner uh, for 2019 uh, the layers button, if you haven't played around with it yet, is uh, the sort of diamond here in the top right corner. Depending on how you have your layout set up, you may also have a button um, somewhere over here on the left side. Um, I forget what it looks like. I think a little layered oval or something. Um, I took it off of my bar because I didn't need it on here twice. Um, so if you open it up here in the top right, I think this is how it comes default. I think I put it back correctly. Um, it should have just the one layer uh, that you start with. It's the layer that you're on. You can see it's labeled current. Uh, the little lock symbol there is if it's locked or unlocked, if you can edit it. Um, and then it has this opacity bar. And that's pretty much it on how you start. Um, so for mine, all I always change my first layer here to say layout or something to that effect. And that's where I always put... Uh, the elements of my page that are going to be on the very bottom um, that I don't want to get impacted by anything. Um, and these layers are global by default. So even though I'm on this page and I've named it, if I were to, you know, move to my next page, you can see it's still called layout. I'm still on it. It's still set up the same. So by default, all your pages will have the same uh, layer setting um, unless you change that. Um, I'm just going to find a blank page here. Um, here we go. So for instance, I was just playing in Procreate and making some of the, the page masks. Um, if I were to bring over a page mask here, oops, still my laser pointer. Okay. Get off of that and paste. Okay, so let's see, um, and I won't get it perfect here, but if I were to bring this in and uh, make a layout here, um, anytime I were to do something like this in good notes, as soon as I start writing on top of it, if I don't pay attention and I end up trying to lasso something later on, you end up moving the whole page all around. It becomes really frustrating. Um, let me tap off of that here. Okay, so I would set that on my page here. And then I would get my layout set up the way I like them, and then I would lock it. Now, you cannot lock a layer if it is your only layer. So you have to always have a layer that you can edit. So the first thing I would do then would be to tap this plus sign here. And I keep a layer in mind that I call writing, which I keep as kind of my main layer. You know, once I get my planner up and going, for the most part, I'm just going to be adding stickers and writing and doing my actual planning. Um, so I call it writing, and it's my main layer. I keep it as my current one here. And then now my layout layer is no longer current and I can hit that little lock symbol and I can lock it. And so now if I were to pick up a, a selection tool of any kind and you know, it's not, it's not picking it up. And so if I had it um, unlocked here, even though I'm not on that layer, if I had it unlocked and I went to my selection tool, you can see it's picking it up. So don't be fooled by thinking just because I'm not on that layer, I can't edit it. Uh, it will actually pick up everything on your page, no matter how many layers you have, no matter what layer you're on, unless it's locked. 
So unless I am actively working on a layout, I keep this one locked and I keep myself on a different uh, layer for writing. Um, so that's one of the most helpful things about the, the layer feature. Um, you can also, uh, you can also add, um, oops, didn't mean to add one. Um, I was going to talk about the, uh, the global, I think you're rid of that one. I just did the, the global layers. Um, so by default, everything, everything will have this. So now if I were to work on my next page in my planner, if I were to make another spread in procreate, I would just, um, come in here and I would unlock this one, change it to my current. I would paste my my new page spread here and then go back to this one and lock this one again. So I keep mine uh, global across the board. I haven't yet come across a reason why I would need multiple layers. I might at some point. I might have a page I want to go crazy with and have tons of layers. Uh, so I'll show you how to do that as well. Um, over here on your page navigation bar... Um, which I have docked over here on the right. If you can't see your page navigation, it's this little page button here. Um, if it's not there, you just tap it and it'll open it. At the bottom here where you, it's kind of cut off, um, it says untitled. And these are the, the page properties for the specific page that you're on. And you can see it has a little toggle here that says page has own layers. So you can, the important thing to note here, I have these two layers on this page with these two names. If I go into my page settings here and I toggle this on and I hit done, it still keeps the ones that were global. So it has its own layers now, but it's going to keep the ones that were already there. So these aren't going to go anywhere. But if I add a new one, and I'm just going to call it a test one, and say done. So I now have this test layer. And if I navigate back to this previous page and look at my layers, you can see I no longer have or I don't have an additional third layer. So you can add to it, but it is going to keep those previous ones. Now you can obviously, um, I could go into this page and I could say edit and I could delete this writing layer. Could say yes, I could say done. If I navigate, so now this one has a test and layout. If I navigate to the previous page, you can see I still have layout and writing. So if that, if you're a hundred percent sure that that page is set to, um, having its own layer uh, here in their setting. If you're sure this is toggled, you can delete those layers and it will not delete them globally across your planner. So if you have, um, you know, your tab layer that you've labeled all your pages, you can feel, you can feel comfortable if you delete them, it's not going to delete it across your entire planner. Um, so once you set it to page has own layers, it really is very um, independent. Now, while I'm in here. So the other important thing to note is if I were to now untoggle this, if I were to change my mind or forget that I had done something or even just accidentally hit it, as soon as you untoggle it, you can see it has given me my global writing layer back. It has added it back to um, this page. And if I navigate to my previous page here, I now have the test layer here. So it resyncs all of your pages if you untoggle that or turn it back off. So even though I deleted a layer on that one, it added it back. And now every page in my planner is going to have a layer called test. So I think it's pretty important. You probably want to make a decision and stick with it. So if you have a page and you decide I want it to be its own, have its own layers, I would probably never um, toggle it back because it's going to probably add a whole bunch of layers to all of your pages, which is not necessarily a big deal, but it just kind of clutters it up a little bit. Um, so yeah, I think it's kind of kind of important to know if you change your mind, it's going to kind of sync all your pages and make them all the same again. Um, but as I said, for the most part, um, I haven't had a need to add them to additional page, uh, add additional layers to only one page. So I have kept all of mine uh, global at this point. Um, the other great thing about layers, uh, as I talked about, I think in one of my other videos about uh, labeling your tabs, is you can put a bunch of stuff on one specific layer that you want on across all your pages and you can copy them very quickly. Um, I won't go through that entire demo again, but if you were to put a uh, text box on the screen, uh, or even if I just want to write on the screen, if you were to put a text box and label all your tabs or do you know anything like that, uh, make sure that is the layer that's set to current. 
And then using one of your selection tools, which are either the square or the kind of freehand circle here, um, you'll see the option copy current layer to all pages. You can hit that. And here I'm gonna go ahead and select all and say copy. So that is going to put the word uh, test. If I navigate around here, it's now going to be on every single page of this planner. Um, and of course, if I do that and I realize, oh my gosh, I, I didn't have that set the way I wanted or I didn't want on every page, you can always go over here to your layers, you can hit edit, hit this little minus sign, hit delete, say yes. And now that layer is gone across the board. So you don't have to go to every single page and edit it. Um, of course, it only works if everything on the layer is bad. If there's certain elements you want to keep and certain elements you want to get rid of, um, you know, you may have to go to each page and edit it or you have to figure out a way um, to do that. It'd probably be easier to delete the layer and recreate it. Um, so the other option, I'll go here to my, to my writing layer. And let's write again. If I'm doing something and I just want to have it on... Um, a select number of pages, then you can go back to your selection tool, copy current layer to all pages, this time change it to selected, and uh, you could just say one through 10 and hit copy. And I am, what am I on? I am on page 16. Um, so if you see, if I navigate back, it's not there, but if I get back to page 10, it's now there and it'll be on pages one through 10. Um, so you kind of have some options there if maybe you just want to label uh, certain pages. Uh, you could do that as well with the layers. I will close out of here, open up my 2019 planner real quick. Kind of just show you the way I was setting it up. Uh, so here you can see in my top right corner, these are the layers that I have been working with so far. Um, my bottom one I keep locked for my page layout. Uh, the the layer above that is where I labeled all of my tabs and copied it to every page of my planner and then I locked that one um, and then I also have my habit tracker in here and I have it locked in hindsight I really could have just put it on the monthly pages as part of the page layout um, but I was kind of playing around with some different elements of it at the time so I had it on its own layer so I wouldn't mess anything up and then once I got it the way I liked it I locked it as well and then I keep uh, a writing layer open and a coloring layer open and that's really just um, like for some of the artsy stuff if you want to play around with it um, like I have I think I have, yeah so on my writing layer I have um, this font and it says gold prep I think this is one of the the boho berry fonts um, so I have this on the writing layer and then on the um, coloring layer I just kind of played around in the background and colored it so it's behind it. Um, the, the fill tool works okay at coloring in certain things, um, but sometimes it leaves white space and I get a little OCD about that. Uh, so sometimes that fill tool will leave a little bit of white space if you're doing a fill. So I like to color on a layer underneath where I am um, so I can really make sure I fill everything in and then the black is still on top because it'll be on the writing layer. Um, and then of course my top layer up here uh, I keep locked unless I'm working on it. It's where I've been putting in my custom links. Uh, I do my links as um, like dark squares or circles so I can get them where I want them in the planner. And then I just turn that layer off so that it's not visible. Um, but the links still work. Um, so I think I have... Where do I have any? Um, I set up some in January. Um, so in January, if I were to turn my links layer visible you can see i have um, some links set up here that take me to my food journal that i keep for each week um so that's how i just chose to do mine i set them up and uh turn them off so that i i don't see them when i'm using the planner but if i ever need to work on them or find them i can turn that layer on and, and easily find them back um, if you ever want to know what is on a layer if you're not sure and you don't want to turn it off or on um, there's also this little tiny diamond with the question mark in it next to the lock symbol um, if you tap on it, it will show you what is on the layer uh, for that page. So you can very easily see, you know, which layers are empty or what you have on it. That one has my habit tracker and uh, that's probably pretty much it for this page. Everything else should be empty. And then as you can see, each layer has um, its own opacity setting. Um, so if I left, I could also leave this layer visible and I could just turn the opacity down. That would accomplish the same thing, just slightly more effort than tapping <laughs> this little button here. 
Um, and then at the very bottom, oh, don't want to do that. Um, at the very bottom, you also have a background opacity, uh, which will turn down everything that's not part of a layer. So for for a planner that you import as a PDF, everything would be considered part of the background. So if you were to turn that down, you see it would get rid of everything except where I kind of filled in here for my habit tracker to cover up the uh, the dot grid. Um, so that's on its own own opacity setting there. Um, if you go into to edit, obviously if you were to uh, tap little minus signs, that would delete them. The little uh, lines on the right hand side would allow you to change the order. Uh, if you're similar with any kind of, you know, Procreate Photoshop type uh, program, you know, the layers go from the bottom up. So anything on this top layer is going to be above anything else. So, you know, I could always drag my, my habit tracker down here or um, since my uh, tabs are at the top of my page, they could be up here, you know, it doesn't, anything that makes sense, you know, you just want to make sure you keep Keep the, the bottom elements of your page on your on your lower layers. Um, you can also interact with layers using what I consider to be kind of the right click of the, the iPad and the Apple world, which would be sort of the, the long press with your finger and you get that extra menu that pops up. Um, so if I was working on um, a specific layer, maybe I should go back over here to the test planner so I don't accidentally mess anything up. If I was working on this planner, I will add my test layer back. And I wanted to create my tabs or something that I'm using. Um, now I'm on this layer. I can also press and hold with my finger until this menu pops up and then I can press other. And you can see, you can also find that copy current layer to all pages button. Um, you could tap it from here. It'll take you to that same option that you had before. You can do all or um, selected. Um, another handy feature, um, let's say you're, you know, working and going crazy and you do all this journaling or editing or um, decorating or whatever, and you look up in the top right hand corner here and you see, you know, oh, I've been on the wrong layer this whole time. Maybe you spent all this time setting up your, your background layout and you look up there and you're on your, your writing layer and uh, that's not the one that you can lock. So you realize you've messed everything up. Um, so, I mean, you can use your selection tool and go through and try to copy and cut and paste and move everything over. Um, but you can also very easily uh, pick up one of your selection tools here. And the key thing is, is that you want to be on the layer that you want it to be on. So if I, so I just, I just wrote the word um, test two here on this test layer. But maybe it's really writing. It really should have been on the writing layer. So the first thing you want to do is make sure... Um, that the layer that the test two is on is not locked, so it is not. And then you want to change it to the writing layer, which is where you want it to be. So the layer, your, your current layer is where you want to go, and the layer that you made your changes on is unlocked. Both those, very important. Um, so then you can use your selection tool, and you can highlight the words here. Again, you can tap and hold with your finger until this menu pops up. Tap other. And then you can scroll down here to where the layer section is and it says move to current layer. And so you can tap that. And now if I were to look up here, um, my test layer here at the top is empty and my writing layer now contains both of my text. Um, and so the reason why the lock is very important, if I were to try to move this back up here to my test layer, but this layer was locked, you'll remember um, your selection tool will not um, pick it up. So now if I were to try to move it to the current layer, um, it wouldn't because it's not actually selecting anything. So you do have to make sure it's unlocked and that you're on, on the layer that you want to move to. Um, so I think that's most everything as far as navigating around the layers. Hopefully you found this video helpful.